welcome to Our Lady of the Holy Spirit. Please join us in our opening song, Alleluia, Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, and happy Easter to you all. Welcome to Our Lady of the Holy Spirit. My name is Father Erzman. I am the pastor here. Uh, we have Deacon Peter Kosk with us. Uh, we have Alex McCullough, who is serving, and Mike Fogarty, who is on music. We thank them all for their service at the altar and, and uh, making this so much easier. It's a joy to gather with you virtually, even if we are not able to be together, to celebrate this gift of Easter, of the Easter morn. And so today we come to this gift of the resurrection and hope in our Lord. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred mystery. I confess to, to Almighty, Almighty God, God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God, glory to God. 
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism of that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us. The witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him, after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning, while it was still dark, and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciples went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He went down and saw the burial clothes there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial clothes there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial clothes, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, he is risen. Truly, he is risen. Alleluia. Today, we celebrate this great feast day, this great solemnity, this great moment, this reality in the history of time that reaches outside of time and space and affects all of creation. We have been longing for this day. We've been waiting, and although we cannot gather today, we allow that longing in our heart for the moment that we can gather again to bring us together, to unite us all the more, to make our hearts yearn for Him. In this time of the pandemic, we have been sitting in the darkness of sin and death, Suffering and death seems to be all around us. At least that's what we are being told all the time. But brothers and sisters, as Christians, we do not, we do not fear suffering or death. We should embrace them and offer them to the cross. Offer them with Christ on the cross. Because of this day, this is why we do not fear suffering and death. We do not fear this plague. It doesn't mean to not be smart. It doesn't mean to take care of ourselves and do our best to keep from getting injured or to keep from getting sick. But brothers and sisters, we do not fear what is to come because we are a resurrection people. As Christians, we are united in this great hope that the darkness will not envelop us, the darkness will not overcome, although it all seems to be in the darkness. Christ is the light that breaks up the darkness, that conquers, that drives the darkness away. Today, this gift of the resurrection and our hope in Him, and our hope in our resurrection, it drives away the darkness and the fear of this illness, the fear of death. Because we should embrace death as 
St. Francis said, the patron of our current Holy Father, Pope Francis. Francis called death, Sister Death. As we are reminded of the fact that we embrace then, like Francis did, Sister Death, and long for the moment that she comes for us so that we might see Christ. If we've lived for him, if we've loved as we should, if we have done what the church has called us to. In our gospel today, Mary Magdala, she came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark. The darkness seemed to still be about, and yes, that is an important moment because she did not yet get it. She was still in the darkness of understanding. Because why did she come to the tomb? She came to the tomb to anoint his body. And she did not find him there because he had been raised. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? Brothers and sisters, Mary didn't get it. None of them did. They were The other apostles and disciples were all hiding in fear. But even in the darkness, even when we don't fully understand, even when we can't fully grasp our faith or our church, even in those moments, God can do wonders with us. Because he had told them over and over, as he tells us over and over, of his impending suffering and death, but also of his resurrection, to be raised on the third day. And when she came to the tomb, she found that stone had been removed and he was gone. So she ran and went to Simon Peter. Brothers and sisters, in the darkness, in the lack of understanding, where did she go? She went to the church. She went to Simon Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved. She went to Peter and John and the other apostles to find clearer understanding. She announces they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. She still doesn't grasp it. And I think this is something so personal and so beautiful for us. Because brothers and sisters, so often I hear people ask this question. Well, you know, I don't understand this teaching or another. Or how can I defend the teachings of the church? I don't have a theology degree. I can't comprehend all the things that we believe. Especially as all these crazy things that we as Catholics do. That we seem to think that we need to defend. Brothers and sisters, we do not need to defend anything. The truth defends itself. We need to be like Mary. That even in our strong Mary of Magdala. Even in our struggle, even in our, in our doubt, even in our worry, even in our concern, even in our lack of understanding, we don't need to know all. We just need to know the tomb is empty. And that's what we do. We then go to tell that the tomb is empty. And even if we do not get anything else, Brothers and sisters, that is the good news. Because many have tried to deny the resurrection. Oh, the, the, the disciples or the apostles stole his body, or, or they just said that he wasn't there. But first question about this is, why are there so many testimonies to that fact? Why are there so many that saw him after the resurrection? And even more so, why would the apostles and the early Christians die for a lie? Because all of the apostles except for John died a martyr's death. John, although they tried to kill him over and over, never was fully martyred, never died. He died a natural death. And with the death of John, public revelation ended and all was revealed that we needed to know for salvation. So brothers and sisters, when we have our doubts, when we don't understand, we don't need to know it all. Be like Mary Magdala and announce the tomb is empty and run to the church. No matter how long you've been away, no matter how long it's been since you've been going to Mass regularly, 
no matter how long it's been since you practiced your faith fully, or struggled with this teaching or another, or refused confession or haven't taken the opportunities, run to the church. When this shelter in place is lifted, when this pandemic is over, run to the church for understanding. Run to the church for the great gift of announcing that, yes, the tomb is empty. Run to the church for clarity and light. Because this is what Mary of Magdala did. And we should model ourselves. And then come to the church and learn more. Come to know more. But in all of this, tell others of the fact that the tomb is empty and Christ has been raised. Go and tell others of what Christ has done to pull you out of your sins, to raise you up from your sins, from your death to your sins, your death in your sins, that you might be raised to life and life eternal. And not just in the here and now, or not just in heaven, but in the here and now. In this moment, when we come to the Mass, we experience heaven. We experience the resurrection. When, she came, when, they came, when Peter came to the tomb, he found that the burial claws were there. Peter and John saw the burial claws, and Peter went in first, and John after. With the cloth that covered his head, not with the burial claws, but rolled up in a separate place. And brothers and sisters, this means that the resurrection was not something hurried, something disorderly, but truly was orderly. Because it is what brings about order again to the whole world. See those claws and see his face imprinted on them. And believe. They went in and they saw and believed. And brothers and sisters, because of the gift of our faith, because of what we believe about the Mass, we not only hear these readings, but when they are proclaimed, they become alive again. Which is why every time we can hear them over and over and over, and they mean something different each time. Because we experience it in a different way every moment that we hear it proclaimed. And then, brothers and sisters, we are there with Peter and John to see and believe. And truly, we have seen the resurrected Christ as so many did throughout all of history. And most especially right after the resurrection, before the ascension, before the coming of the, of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles. They longed for him, as you do at your home. They longed to see him in his resurrected body. And they did not fully see him as he was because he looked different. And we do not either. As we look upon the Eucharist, it doesn't look like Christ, but it is. His body and his blood. Not his dead flesh, but his living flesh, his resurrected flesh. We are not cannibals. His living flesh that we receive in the gift of his Eucharist, it looks different. But it is him. So see and believe. Experience and come to know Christ and who he was as Peter did more and more and more. And then after the ascent, uh, the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles, Peter went out to proclaim this moment in the reading of the Acts of the Apostles. If you need a declaration of what our faith is about, this is it. Peter proceeded to speak and said, and hear his words as if he's preaching to you right now. You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism, that John preached how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with, with the Holy Spirit and power. That we are witnesses of what he did. That so many saw him. That he died on a tree. That he was raised on the third day. And he was visible to many. And then he gave us witnesses, the apostles, to go and preach to the people that we might know that truly he is risen, that truly the tomb is empty. Because those who doubt, the tomb is a very 
beautiful place in Jerusalem. If you've never been there, try to take the opportunity to go. And the tomb is empty. He is not there. If this was all a lie, wherever he was would be enshrined as a holy place. But instead we enshrine the empty tomb because it points us to the gift of what Paul tells us today. That Christ was raised. That you are raised with him. To seek not the things of this world, but to seek him and heaven. When Christ, your life, appears, that you too will appear with him in glory. So brothers and sisters, go forth. Be like Mary. Run out to the world. Run to the church. And then with the understanding, with the whole church, with the apostles, as Peter and Paul and all of the apostles and so many have come before, go and tell the world the hope of the resurrection. Because right now, the world needs that hope. Right now, brothers and sisters, the world needs Christ's hope. That death has not conquered and does not conquer, but because of Christ's death on the cross, it is conquered. And he has been raised. And where we go, we hope and long to follow, as we hope and long to receive his resurrection again in the Eucharist. Draw many to this hope. Dear brethren, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we announce what, what, which we once renounced Satan and his works, and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you to respond at home and to respond with us. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth? I do believe, I do believe, this is our faith, this is the faith of the Church. We are proud. Yeah.
My dear brothers and sisters, in the hope of the resurrection, knowing that Christ brings our prayers to the Father, we turn our hearts and our lives to that hope for him to hear and answer our prayers. That the whole church in this Easter season feels the joy of the first Christians spreading the good news, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That all impositions of authority be the ease that transforms society and heals our fragile earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all Christian women and men witness the resurrected Christ in all they say and do. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have been baptized continue to grow in understanding the Paschal mystery. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who celebrate the Lord's rising from the dead and the share his blood and body recognize him in one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the priests and seminarians of our diocese and all parishioners of both parishes for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. If you'd like to join us in reciting our prayer for our parish together. Almighty God, my parish is composed of people like me. I help make it what it is. It will be friendly if I am. It will be holy if I am. Its pews will be filled if I help fill them. It will do great work if I work. It will be prayerful if I pray. It will make generous gifts to many causes if I am a generous giver. It will bring other people into its worship if I invite and bring them. It will be a parish family of loyalty and love, of fearlessness and faith, and of compassion, charity, and mercy, if I, who make it what it is, am filled with these same qualities. Therefore, with the help of God, I will dedicate myself to the task of being all the things I want my parish to be. Bless my journey, Lord God, that I might follow Jesus and build the church for your glory. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer you the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished. For Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just to do the at all times to claim you, O Lord. But on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the ending hymn of your glory as they, as they are played. Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. 
On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, gracious, and grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace and leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Communion antiphon. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Alleluia. Therefore, let us keep the feast with the unleavened bread 
and purity of purity and truth. Alleluia, alleluia. Repeat after me the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, my Jesus, I believe that you, I believe that you are present in, are present in the blessed sacrament. The blessed sacrament. I love you. I love you above all things. Above all things. And I desire you. And I desire you in my soul. In my soul. Since I cannot. Since I cannot. Now receive you sacramentally. Now receive you sacramentally. Come at least. Come at least. Spiritually into my heart. Spiritually into my heart. As though you were already there. As though you were already there. I embrace you. I embrace you. And unite myself. And unite myself. Completely to you. Completely to you. Permit not. Permit not. That I should ever be separated from you. That I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal Mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you all for joining us this day, this Easter day. Uh, a uh, wonderful, happy Easter greeting to all of you. We have this great gift of the Mass because of uh, my helpers here. Thank you to uh, Mike for all the music, and uh, thank you to Deacon Peter and Alex for their assistance in, in making sure that this happens uh, in, in as easiest way for me as possible. Um, but then uh, thank you to all of you for gathering and joining with us and participating at home. Make sure you're actually participating at home when you go to Mass. You're answering and praying and singing as you should. Uh, you know, I call you out on it here. Uh, I want to call you out there as well to make sure that you continue your participation. I thank you for all that you are for me. I, I look forward for the day that I can see you in our pews again. I do truly miss you all and, and love each and every one of you uh, from the bottom of my heart as my, as my parish. So parish is and, uh, and all my people at my other assignments as well. I, I really, truly uh, look forward to the day of seeing you all again. I miss you. Uh, thank you for uh, gathering today. Truly he is risen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and happy Easter. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bound up for a blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate with the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. archangel defend us in battle be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil may god rebuke him we humbly pray and do thou o prince of the heavenly hosts by the power of god thrust into hell satan and all the evil spirits who wander about the world seeking the ruin of souls amen
Thank you to all who decorated. Thank you to my staff for the continued work that they do. Thank you to uh, all of you for gathering with us this day. It is such a great blessing to have uh, so many who helped uh, make our church and our liturgy so beautiful and continue the work of our parish. God bless you all and happy Easter.